There we go. Jose, are there comments? John, John Segura. Hi. Yeah, Jose, yeah. <laughs> and Diago, there's room here so you can join. Don't be shy. I promise I won't um, bother you. All right. I guess I'll wait one more minute or something. Um, so, Patricia, tell me, how have you been doing? I'm good. I'm preparing the essay for Greg. For oh, Christian. okay. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Uh, here we go. Here's Christian. Here they're coming. All right. Hi, Christian. Hi, Jose. Hello, teacher. Hello. How is everybody? I'm doing fine. Right. How about you? I'm good. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to wait a little bit for you guys. All right. So today we're going to read this short story and then talk about how we might write about it. All right. So it says, the following is an excerpt from a short story by Humpa Lahiri born in London in 1967 and raised in Rhode Island, the daughter of Bengali parents, Lahiri has a heritage and culture influenced by both India and the United States. Mrs. Sens appeared in her collection of short stories entitled The Interpreter of Maladies, published by Houghton Mifflin, Boston, 1999. Okay. So I have never heard of her until now. So this is, this is good. All right, here we go. Elliot didn't mind going to Mrs. Sen's after school. By September, the tiny beach house where he and his mother lived year round was already cold. Sorry? Yes. So is it clear that you don't have everybody or just me? I don't know. Is it clear to everybody? The, do you want me to make it bigger? Is that better? I think it's a uh, problem in my computer. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. Now it's okay. Okay. Elliot and his mother had to bring a portable heater along with, oh, I'm sorry. Elliot and his mother had to bring a portable heater along whenever they moved from one room to the other and to seal the windows with plastic sheets and a hairdryer. <laughs> Poor things. <laughs> All right. The beach was barren and dull to play on alone. The only neighbors who stayed on past Labor Day, a young married couple, had no children, and Elliot no longer found it interesting to gather broken mussel shells in his bucket or to stroke the seaweed strewn like strips of emerald lasagna on the sand. Okay, um, so Labor Day is a holiday in the US. It is usually about September. It, it, it's different every year, but September 3rd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, somewhere in there of every year, right? It, it changes. Um, so Labor Day usually officially marks the end of summer. And most schools begin um, after Labor Day. And this is a day where we, where we um, sort of remember and acknowledge all the people who work so hard at their jobs. Okay. So, and then um, lasagna, <laughs> this is, it's a type of pasta. Um, and they are large noodles, <laughs> large flat noodles. Um, so when when it says um, 
or to stroke the seaweed strewn like strips of emerald lasagna. So that means this, the seaweed was like green strips of lasagna. <laughs> so the little boy, he liked to play on the beach. But now it was after Labor Day, and so um, nobody, nobody really was there to play with him, and it wasn't that fun anymore. Okay. <clears throat> Mrs. Sen's apartment was warm, sometimes too warm. The radiators continuously hissed like a pressure cooker, I think. Like a pressure cooker. <laughs> Elliot learned to remove his sneakers first thing in Mrs. Sen's doorway and to place them on the bookcase next to a row of Mrs. Sen slippers, each a different color with soles as flat as cardboard and a ring of leather to hold her big toe. Okay, so he's describing the, like, that Mrs. Sen had all these different sandals <laughs> and it was customary to take them off before you went inside. Are there questions so far? No. Okay. He especially enjoyed watching Mrs. Sen as she chopped things seated on newspapers on the living room floor. Instead of a knife, she used a blade that curved like the prow of a Viking ship, sailing to battle in distant seas. The blade was hinged at one end to a narrow wooden base. The steel more the steel more black than silver lacked a uniform polish and had a, and had a serrated crest she told Elliot for grading each afternoon mrs sen lifted the blade and locked it into place so that it met the base at an angle Facing the sharp edge without ever touching it, she took whole vegetables between her hands and hacked them apart. Cauliflower, cabbage, butternut squash. She split things in half, then quarters, speedily producing florets, cubes, slices, and shreds. She could peel a potato in seconds. At times, she sat cross-legged, at times with legs splayed surrounded by an array of colanders and shallow bowls of water in which she immersed her chopped ingredients. Okay, so, yeah, so this is, this is, this is kind of difficult. So, okay, so we have Mrs. Sen, right, <laughs> and she has, I don't know, some kind of like knife it's like I mean it's not a knife it's like a it sounds like a sword it's like it's got a base and then this this it angles off like this some kind of sharp blade and then she uses this to to, to chop like vegetables so like cabbage or or lettuce or broccoli or anything like this carrots and she just like this is how she she shreds the vegetables. <laughs> yeah, so it it sounds dangerous. <laughs> and so sometimes, um, and then it says sometimes she's cross-legged. Um, cross-legged is like when you put your feet like this, cross-legged. And then other times her she her legs are apart. So um, I don't know. She sounds maybe a little. I don't know, <laughs> Mrs. Sen. Kind of, kind of scary. <laughs> so that's what, so that's what she's doing. And then the little boy, Elliot, he sounds very young. <laughs> um, he sounds young, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how old he is, but maybe ten. 
I don't know. He seems pretty little. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So then around her, she has like these bowls of like water and she's putting the pieces of vegetables in these in these bowls. <laughs> so she seems kind of crazy. <laughs> All right. Are there questions? Does it make sense what's happening? <laughs> I, uh, Katy, the history is Elliot and your girlfriend visit a house of your parent of the city, no? Uh, <laughs> Elliot with with uh, with who are the visit? Oh, I I think he's with his parents. I don't know though. I'm not sure. Uh, um. Okay. Well, we're in the middle of uh, reading a book. That's what we're doing, and we're going to go back to it right now. And I was just explaining what we just read. So uh, the main character is Mrs. Sen, and she's like this weird lady who um, is cutting. She's cutting vegetables. That's what she's doing right now. <laughs> okay, that's what she's doing. All right, continuing. Here we go. Okay. Um, so this is what we just read. Each afternoon, Mrs. Sen lifted the blade and locked it into place so that it met the base at an angle. Facing the sharp edge without ever touching it, she took whole vegetables between her hands and hacked them apart. Cauliflower, cabbage, butternut squash. She split things in half, then quarters, speedily producing florets, cubes, slices, and shreds. She could peel a potato in seconds. At times she sat cross-legged, at times with legs splayed, surrounded by an array of colanders and shallow bowls of water in which she immersed her chopped ingredients. All right. While she worked, she kept an eye on the television and an eye on Elliot, but she never seemed to keep an eye on the blade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so nevertheless, she refused to let Elliot walk around when she was chopping. Just sit, sit, please. It will take just two more minutes, she said, pointing to the sofa, which was draped at all times with a green and black bed cover printed with rows of elephants bearing palanquins, palanquins on their backs. The daily procedure took about an hour. In order to occupy Elliot, she supplied him with the comic section of the newspaper and crackers spread with peanut butter and sometimes a popsicle or carrot sticks sculpted with her blade. She would have roped off the area if she could. Once, though, she broke her own rule. Instead... Oh, wait, sorry. And, oh, I'm sorry. She Once, though, she broke her own rule. In need of additional supplies and reluctant to rise from the catastrophic mess that barricaded her, she asked Elliot to fetch or to get something from the kitchen. If you don't mind, there's a plastic bowl large enough to hold this spinach in the cabinet next to the fridge. Careful. Oh, dear. Be careful she cautioned as he approached. Just, just leave it, thank you, on the coffee table. I can reach. All right, so, um, <laughs> so I guess, um, <laughs> I guess, um, <laughs> Have I guess done this she, before? No, I guess she, um, Mrs. <laughs> I haven't actually. I'm just trying to make it interesting because it's an actor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just makes it more fun. Okay, so we have this lady, Mrs. Sens, and I guess she, um, I guess she kind of like babysits this boy Elliot. I'm not really sure, but or he spends a lot of time there, so she kind of looks after him, I guess, <laughs> and she's kind of. Um, She's like a little bit, um, she controls like every single thing in her house. Like, you know, the sofa is a certain way and all the things in her kitchen are a certain way. So when he went to go get her something, she was kind of like flipping out. Ah! 
it's okay, it's okay. So she sounds a little odd, a little strange. Okay, let's see what happens next. <laughs> um, okay, okay, so she tells him, stop, stop. All right, she had brought the blade from India, where apparently there was at least one in every household. Whenever there was, I'm sorry, whenever there is a wedding in the family, she told Elliot one day, or a large celebration of any kind, my mother sends out word in the evening for all the neighborhood women to bring blades just like this one. And then they sit in an enormous circle on the roof of our building, laughing and gossiping and slicing 50 kilos of vegetables through the night. Her profile hovered protectively over her work. A confetti of cucumber, eggplant, and onion skins heaped around her. It is impossible to fall asleep those nights listening to their chatter. She paused to look at a pine tree framed by the living room window. Here in this place where Mr. Sin has brought me, I cannot sometimes sleep in so much silence. Okay. Another day, she sat prying the pimpled yellow fat off chicken parts, then dividing them between thigh and leg. As the bones cracked apart over the blade, her golden bangles jostled, her forearms glowed, and she exhaled audibly through her nose. So they have some, let's see. So jostled means to like move around a lot. Exhaled audibly means breathed out noisily. And um, bangles, mm, how can I describe bangles? Bangles are like, um, like women often, they wear like bracelets, a lot of them, like 10, 12, 13, 14. And then when they move, they, they, they make a sound. They're like bracelets. We call them bangles or bangles, something like this. I know, sorry my, um, sorry my dogs are so loud, but ugh. okay. Um, let's see, all right, so where were we? Here we go, so. Um, okay. So she's taking apart these, she's taking apart a chicken. <laughs> All right. At one point, she paused, gripping the chicken with both hands and stared out the window. Fat and sinew clung to her fingers. Elliot, if I began to scream right now at the top of my lungs, would someone come? Mrs. Sen, what's wrong? Nothing. I am only asking if someone would come. Elliot shrugged. Maybe. At home, that, that is all you have to do. Not everybody has a telephone. But just raise your voice a bit or express grief or joy of any kind and one whole neighborhood and half of another has come to share the news to help with arrangements. By then, Elliot understood when Mrs. Sin said home. She meant India not the apartment where she sat chopping vegetables. He thought of his own home, just five miles away, and the young married couple who waved from time to time as they jogged at sunset along the shore. On Labor Day, they'd had a party. People were piled on the deck, eating, drinking, the sound of their laughter rising above the weary sigh of the waves. Elliot and his mother weren't invited. It was one of the rare days his mother had off, but they didn't go anywhere. She did the laundry and balanced the checkbook and, with Elliot's help, vacuumed the inside of the car. Elliot had suggested that they go through the car wash a few miles down the road, as they did every now and then, so that they could sit inside safe and dry, as soap and water 
and a circle of giant canvas ribbons slapped the windshield. But his mother said she was too tired and sprayed the car with the hose. When, by evening, the crowd on the neighbor's deck began dancing, she looked up their numbers in the phone book and asked them to keep it down. Okay. Questions? Do you have questions? No. No. Everyone's... This is actually quite difficult. This is very... It's literature. It's very, um... Yeah, balanced. <laughs> it's very high-level writing. Um, balance the checkbook. Um, mm. This means to... All right. So this is a checkbook, right? A checkbook. And inside you have you have checks, right? So every time you write a check, you're supposed to keep a, keep write it in here what you wrote, right? And then you keep track of how much money you have left. Because you can have lots of checks but no money, right? Yeah, that's a fun. So we call this balancing the checkbook. It just means um, to, to keep track of how much money you have. <laughs> Good. Anybody else? Oh, sinew. Sinew is like the um, ugh. it's it's like the the parts of your of your body that keep your arm inside its socket. So like same thing with the chicken. The chicken has like they're like, I don't know, they're like strings, kind of, that keep their arms to their body. Sinew. It's like, it's, yeah, like when you kill a chicken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Checkbook is only to control the money? No, well, yeah. And you write the checks, too. But yeah, but like when you kill a chicken, it's like, yeah, and you take it apart. There's all this like stuff that keeps the arms and, and its wings to the body. That's sinew. <laughs> okay, good. So they let's see what happens here. Um. Uh, okay. They might call you, Elliot said, eventually to Mrs. Sen, but they might complain that you were making too much noise. From where Elliot sat on the sofa, he could detect her curious scent of mothballs and cumin, and he could see the perfectly centered part in her, in her braided hair, which was shaded with crushed vermilion and therefore appeared to be blushing. Now, cumin and vermilion, oh, okay. Vermilion is a bright red. I didn't, I did not know this, so I guess she, like, dyes her hair or something. Whoops. Sounds like it. She kind of dyes her hair. Okay. At first, Elliot had wondered if she had cut her scalp or, or if something had bitten her there. But then one day, actually, this right here is a mistake. It should say, um, bitten her. It's, instead, it says here. It's, it's wrong. All right. Um, but then one day, he saw her standing before the bathroom mirror, solemnly applying with the head of a thumbtack, a fresh stroke of scarlet powder, scarlet is also means red, which she stored in a small jam jar. A few grains of the powder fell onto the bridge of her nose as she used the thumbtack to stamp a dot above her eyebrows. I must wear the powder every day, she explained when Elliot asked her what it was for for the rest of the days that I am married. Like a wedding ring, you mean? Exactly, Elliot, exactly like a wedding ring, only with no fear of losing it in the dishwasher. 
Okay. All right. Questions. No questions. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Cumin. Cumin. Cumin is some kind of spice. It's like a. It's like a. I don't know. It's a spice of some kind for cooking, and it's mm, very, okay. very common in India. Very common. Cumin. Um, yes, it's yes, it's I a know. little spicy. It's a little. It's a we little. Put, put yeah. it in cooking to give some special. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Personally, I don't like it. Ugh. Cumin, <laughs> but it's very popular um, in India. But I don't care for it. Um, okay. Shaded. Shaded means colored. So, yeah, it just means, in this case, it means colored. That's it. Okay. Any other questions? Like I said, this is, this is pretty high level. Um, high I level understand. Stuff. Uh, the, na the neighbor not invite uh, to Elliot and your mother. That's right. No? That's and right. Then, and then they are <laughs> called for, for they not. Yeah, turn the music they down, are right? Many noise, huh? yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, they gotta go to the party. Also. Yeah, here, um, here in the U.S., um, you can call the the police, right? Policia, if if somebody's having a party and it's too loud, um, you can call the police if a neighbor is too loud. So, like, if they have the music too loud, um, yeah, you can, you can, you can call the police. So, um, after, like, 10 o'clock at night, I think, so after, like, 22, I think, after this time, 2200, um, you have to, like, quiet down a little bit. Um, that's the law, but anyway, yeah, so. Exactly. Okay. Oh, I know. Well, right. I agree. <laughs> this is America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't try to talk to your neighbor if they don't, like, pull out a gun and shoot you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's see what they have here um, for us. Some questions, I guess. Let's see. How can we make this more interesting? Yeah, invite him. Exactly. <laughs> um... All right, so they have some vocabulary. Okay, blah, blah. Let's, let's get to the more interesting stuff here. Vocabulary, vocabulary, context. Okay. Um, okay, let's talk about this. Understanding the characters. This is more interesting, I think. Um, so understanding the characters. So it says, what values are important to Mrs. Sen? So... Okay, so if you were going to write about, if you were going to, you know, write something, write like a response or write an essay about this little story, this excerpt, um, you might want to talk about what, about Mrs. Sen, right, and what she is like. So, what is she like? What values... Yeah, she. <laughs> yeah, she. Um, she likes traditional cooking, right? So she <laughs> traditional <laughs> um, cooking, right? The way she was taught from India. <laughs> Hello, Tomas. How are you? Uh, <laughs> okay, from India. Very good. Uh huh. And she seems to, um, she seems to not mind Elliot, right? She seems to, uh, she seems to like kids, right? Uh, she seems pretty nice to, she seems nice to Elliot. 
a little bit. Yep. Yeah, no, you can join, Tomas. If there, I think there's room here. Yeah, she likes to watch TV while cooking. Good. Right, it's always on. And she, um, she still wears or dresses very much like from India, right? Like she has the sandals and, um, and she has the, the dot on her forehead. Uh, so am I spelling this right? Forehead. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, she's traditional. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really tell us. Uh, she uses cumin, it sounds like, which, okay, um, it's not my favorite, but a lot of people really like it. So, um, yeah, so she's, she's interesting, right? And then um, Elliot's mom seems to work a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she does give another flavor. Elliot's mom seems to be at work a lot, right? So Elliot is just kind of kind of by himself, right? So he goes over there to Mrs. Sen because there's really nowhere else for him to go. Um Okay. They didn't really uh, we didn't really read enough to say too much, I don't think, but, um, sh yeah. What else do we know? That's it. Okay. Um, okay. I guess I'm going to have to go over some vocabulary. <laughs> All right. Um, vocabulary. Okay. I'm just going to try to, um, uh, do this with you a little differently. Okay, so vocabulary, Baron. Yeah, just an excerpt, right? Yeah, not much was said is right, John. All right, so Baron. Baron means um, like not a lot of life. Um, So here they say barren means empty, but it means more than that. Um, it means empty of living things. So we would say, um, like, for example, um, if a woman is not able to have children, we say she is barren. Um, yeah, Back a desert life. would be barren. I mean, pretty barren. There's still some. There's still some uh, living things, but not a lot, right? Very good. Um, okay, and then strewn. Strewn just means um, like thrown. Thrown. Okay. Yeah. Strewn. Yeah. Spread around or. or yeah, it means to like, like, mm, I don't have, I don't really have an example here, but um, like if you have like te teenagers, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and if you look in their room, they usually have like their clothes are like strewn all over the place, right? Like they might have something on the back of the chair and then something on the bed and something over here. Their clothes are just everywhere. So yeah, like thrown all over the place. They um, tend to have their clothes strewn all over. Okay. Yeah, like, like a mess, yeah. But this says... The way this describes it is not spread around. Spread. This is not okay. It's. I wouldn't call it this. It's a little more scattered than that. Spread around. Okay. 
fine. Um, Elliot placed his sneakers next to a row. This a row just means a line. So a row. It can mean it means a line. It can also mean um, and, and a row means a line. But if we can also pronounce this word row, a row, and that means a fight. So you have to be careful. <laughs> and you won't know how to say the word until you see the context. Okay. Um, and somebody asked me Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet means a deep, uh, like a, a deep red color. Scarlet. Okay. Did I miss anybody, anyone else's question? Okay. All right. Um, okay, then a blade is just a sharp, uh, the sharp part of a knife. Cutting the pulp? Yes. Yeah, the cutting part. Yeah. Okay, and then hat. I kind of showed you hacked, but I guess the real definition is to cut quickly. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um. Array. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, too. No problem, Eddie, thank you. Um. That's true. We do use the word hacked for that, Elon. That's, that's really good. Yes, we do hack into other people's computers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, then they talk about an array. Um, okay, I guess it means, well, here they're saying it means a variety. All right. Okay, a variety of something, an array. Yeah, okay. Um then she was surrounded by shallow bowls in which she immersed. Oh, immersed. This means um, put underwater. Oh, immersed. Okay, this means put underwater. Um, a colander. Okay, um, a colander. Hmm. How can I describe a colander? Uh, let me show you a picture. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Shimla. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that like when we do spaghetti and. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> you make spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way. I, I'm assuming we're talking about the same thing, but like this, a colander. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a here's a picture, <laughs> and you use it to like drain. Um, you use it to drain, like pasta or drain vegetables. Yeah, like a strainer, kind of. Yeah, it allows all the water to come out, but still keeps the food together. Let's see. Does that make sense, John? A colander. <laughs> All right, um, immersed, okay, draped. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like I usually immerse chocolate cookies into a glass of milk. <laughs> All right, um, how do I spell it? Colander? Um, I guess here, I guess call and Let's see. I'm just copying from the book because this is not a word. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> so it's not a word I, I write very often, for sure. I don't even say it very often. Okay. Um, draped. Um, uh, it says the sofa was draped at all times with a bed cover. It means covered, I guess. Yeah. Um, she was reluctant to rise from the mess. Reluctant means unwilling. Yeah. Uh, like my dog Finley is reluctant <laughs> to do anything I ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, detect means to notice. Me. Like a detective, yeah. Um, Me. Yeah, I'd like to notice. Uh huh. So you could like a detective uh, to find things out. Uh, so, can I see detect like found? I detected this problem. I yes. Uh huh. You problem. can say exactly that. You can say I detected a problem with our security system. This means that you noticed a problem there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel. He was here earlier, but I think he's having problems. I mean not in this not in this class, but I saw him earlier today. So yeah. I think he was having Yeah. He's got he problems. Was having some yeah, some computer issues, I think, something like this. I could be wrong, but something like this. Okay, so, um, alrighty then. So now, tell me, what's, what's, what's happening? What do we say? What's happening? In other words, what's going on? How are you? Tell me what's going on. <laughs> oh, you're, ta you're chatting to Miguel now. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you ask him how's it hanging. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, what what are, what is everybody up to? What are you guys doing? Just finished the competition. Okay. For what chef. Kind of composition? Writing something. A chef in competition. Oh, a competition. Yeah, for Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of some of the food I've done. That's pretty exciting. Wow. I and Mustafa, you're writing something. What what kind of writing is it like for business? Is it lit is it like fiction, non-fiction? Yes. Details, details. <laughs> <laughs> Too hard for me. Uh Oh, I see. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. Dang, I can barely boil water, so I'm just like in awe of you. <laughs> That's great. So you probably know what Kumon is, or Kuman or whatever. I fixed computers just in case you want to recommend me with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else is happening? Lena, what what are you doing? Or Noelia, what are you doing? Um, I am uh, I am architect. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh no, no, okay, that's good. But I mean, like right now, like what, like what, I mean, okay, you're taking ah, right now. <laughs> yeah, like you're taking a class. I get, I know that, but like, what else? Like, are you what, what? In general, uh, like for fun, like what are you doing? Like what? I am drawing. Oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> Very good. But I can't do that either. So I can't cook. I can't draw. <laughs> but oh, you can an array. Speak an array is like um. I have to show you a picture. I don't particular particularly care. Right. Exactly. An array in math. Like if I want to show you two times three, right? 
um, I can show you two times three. Yeah, exactly. So I could do two times three. And this would be this would be like an array, right? Like it's ordered, right? Two times three. Yeah. Yes. But but in the story, they give a different definition. They say variety. I don't I don't agree with this, but okay. I guess in that context it, it means variety. I guess it so. depends on the situation. Yeah, it depends on the situation, but like an array is just in mathematics, okay. in general in mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems to me an odd word to use there. But anyways, okay. That's fine. All right. So, um Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I don't want to I don't want to um I don't want to like argue with the dictionary, but there's lots of different ways that you can um define a lot of these things. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, so I I have to tell you I have to tell you the story about why why my dogs are barking so much all the time, like today and yesterday. Okay, so I have a cat. She's she's kind of a wild cat, kind of wild. <laughs> um, and I found her um, around eight years ago. Uh, anyway, she's 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 a little strange. So she's been inside the house for for eight years, just in. So then yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, she got outside. She escaped. So she's never been outside that I know of her whole life. And so now she's like in my yard back here, like <laughs> hovered, like you know, under a bush or something. So um. <laughs> Yeah, so now the dogs, of course, notice they detect the cat. So it's like all this drama. That's why they're barking. So, and then the cat is scared, so she won't move. So she's been outside for two days, and the dogs have been barking for two days. So that's what's happening. <laughs> that's what's going on here. That's why they're barking. Anyway, yes, so um, that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she won't oh, come in, so sense. I don't know what to do. Let so me. I'm just let, here waiting. Let, let, let me tell you something very quickly here, Kerry. Okay. Um, I was working a few months ago on customer service representative in Mexico. I was okay. providing customer service over the phone to the whole United States and Canada as well for wow. Western Union. So. Okay. We provide that service to the to the whole United States and in Canada as well, and Western Union, as you know, they were sending money all over the world. Right. So I was receiving phone calls from the whole country. Could be sometimes LA, sometimes um, New Jersey, sometimes New York, sometimes uh, Connecticut, Tennessee, okay. the whole country. So the the point is that I heard and I. And I, I have spoken to to many different people in the United States, and from the south, from the north, and this is um, my point of view that you have the better real American accent uh, in, in this website. I I already heard a lot of of teachers here on on Kalingo. And I guess your your voice and your tone, your your tone of voice and, and your accent, it's the best one for me. You you have the real American accent, in, in my opinion, because I have spoken to to many American people, and I, I'm not trying to be racist, but I, I I do have an accent because it's not my first language. But I have spoken to to uh, black people, to yellow people, Mexican, whatever you want to call it, and and in my point of view, you're your action is the best one. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's um. Hey, <laughs> seriously. 
500 no, years. Is the green bag. Oh, <laughs> you know, but they think you <laughs> It's just because, um, yeah, it's just because I'm probably the only one here that's like a real teacher. I mean, really, you know, like a real teacher. Like, I mean, yeah. I went to college and I mean, I think the other people, they teach, but they're not, um, they haven't been trained. You know, there's a difference between, um, how can I say it? There's a difference between knowing something and then knowing how to teach it. It's two separate things. Yeah. Uh, and for me, um, that's probably what you notice because uh, when we go to teacher school, um, um, speaking, especially here in Los Angeles where um, nobody speaks English uh, naturally. I mean, they're, they That's all right. speak a different language at home. Correct. Yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah, so that's why I think. But thank you. On, <laughs> lots on, of on years. My point, on, on my point of view, Cari, uh, because I, I, I'm trying to, to, to insist with this because I have spoken to many native speakers. Yes. You're not the first one that I talked to. I have I spoken to, to people that was born in New York, that was born in Connecticut, that was born in Washington, D.C. Right. So, and and I, I was doing that job for, let's say, almost three years. Wow. So eight, eight hours a day speaking English, eight hours a day <laughs> defending defending a company yeah. uh, like Western Union. With but angry, you're not getting angry Americans. <laughs> yes, but you're not getting paid from Western Union. You're getting my, my salary was paid by the company that con that was uh, yes, that made a contract the with Western right. Union. That's you that's the point. So I, I I have spoken to many people because I was working there like three years. So yeah. that that's the that's the reason why I feel comfortable saying that because no, no, I have th spoken to many people. You have the best. Accent. It, it's not about teaching. You, you, your teaching is pretty well, but your accent. Okay. I make, I make emphasis. Your accent. It's a real American accent. If you close your eyes and and, 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 and listen to your accent, you can say that's a real American accent. My point yeah. of view. Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> I thank you. I like I said. I I want to say it's because of all the teacher school because they they make you. I mean, over and over and over and oh you know I got the video camera you know you gotta pass all the tests so um yeah and then yeah but thank you maybe I uh, maybe I do have kind of a special voice I don't know but um it's it's hard and then to try to teach writing here sometimes is not so easy because how I mean how can I like help you write in an hour it's kind of difficult so um all, all, like, all we can really do is like read. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, thank you, Elon. <laughs> uh, and even though I've been in LA, I've been in LA, I, I've been in um, Oxnard, um, among other cities oh, in California. Oh yeah, you've been really close. Even yeah. though, I, I, even though I live in Mexicali, I, I'm from, from, I'm, I'm from Mexicali, so I'm a, uh, at about four hours from. Yeah, from, about four from hours. Here. Yeah. Yes. So. And, and, and you were right. Uh, the most people that lives in LA and uh, they speak uh, another language. That's right. Besides English, mm -hmm. you, you were right at that point. That's right. Yeah. So we, and and I think I um, I think I've been you know since because I was a teacher for so many years here in Los Angeles, you you have to um, you learn very quickly to um, I don't know identify. Yeah, you have to make sure that people understand you or every day is horrible. <laughs> so you're forced to, um, yeah, speak quickly or, or something so that, or speak properly or speak clearly so that your students can understand. Otherwise, it's horrible. <laughs> yes. It's a long day when none of your students can understand you. So, yeah. That's it. But thank you very much. Yeah, and you had a hard job. Oh my God, customer service. Um, I with was Western doing, Union. Yes, yeah. See, I, even I have the Western Union debit card. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
many people have lost money through Western Union because they were scammed, for example. Oh, yes. And, and so people think that Western Union ought to pay that money because right. they were scammed. But that's not the way it is. They, no. send a, they, they send a paper when they're sending the money, so it means that they are agree with the Western Union regulations. That's so, right. so practically my job was arguing with America, with the whole United States for eight hours every single day. <laughs> So, but it, it you should be funny. a saint. You need to be canonized. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah something like that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Woo, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think that these jobs like tech support and and, um, and uh, customer service are the hardest, right? Because Oh man, you know, people expect they expect the world, you know? I mean yeah. they they and like they try once. Oh my mouse doesn't work. Think call hey. they're screaming on the it's like hello, did you turn it on? On hello. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, that's right. Um, I know, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so frustrating. Yeah. yeah in, but, in, um, in my particular case, for example, when when people when when, when the American people lost their money so they they became furious in 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 when they called the one eight hundred number, and they are expecting uh, a native speaker, and all of the sudden, they realize that they are calling to to Western Union, but the answer is being a, the 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 guy that is uh, the other uh, the, the the other side. It's in Mexico. They hear your accent and they start screaming. And, and being racist, hey, I don't want to talk to any Mexicans, I want to speak with Americans, this, that. Right. And sometimes I have to say, ma'am or sir, Western Union don't pay Americans to do this job. They That's pay right. only Mexicans, <laughs> Philippines, and Indians. So take your pick. If you right. want to speak with, Ameri with a Mexican, you will be able to speak to a Philippine or to an Indian, and that's, that's right. it. <laughs> yeah, because it's so true, because I mean, Americans, they want, um, they want everything really cheap, but they don't want to work for cheap. So they want to pay like a dollar for a cup of coffee, but they want to make like $50 an hour. So, um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little crazy. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, I will see you all soon. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Miguel, for showing up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you all soon. Bye. See you, Bye. 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 Yeah, you're the only one we missed. See you. Bye-bye, teacher. <laughs>